Hey there, this is Vlad from the Insurance Sales Lab. And in this video, I'd like to show you how to overcome the objection when a prospect tells you that they have life insurance through work. So let's suppose you're having a conversation with your client and you bring up life insurance and they say, yeah, I don't need life insurance. I already have it through work. Now, you and I both know that having a policy, a life insurance policy through work is completely different than having a personal life insurance policy. There are so many differences between a work life insurance policy and a personal policy. So in this video, I'll show you how to bring up some of those key points and convey that to your prospect and allow them to make a decision on whether or not it's worth getting a personal policy. So here's what you would say. I'll pull up the script right over here and you should see where it says objection one, I have it through work. You would say, John, it's great that you have life insurance through work, uh, but do you have a personal life insurance policy outside of work? And most people will say, no, I don't have one. I didn't think I needed one. Then you say, look, we always encourage our clients to keep the life insurance policy that they have through work because they're usually very cheap to buy and sometimes even free if the employer pays for it. However, the major downside, the major downside with life insurance policies that you get through work is that you don't personally own that policy. It's owned by the company you work for. So the moment you leave your job, you also lose your life insurance policy. And that's very risky. That's why we always recommend that you have a personal life insurance policy outside of work so that you're always insured regardless of who you work for. Have you considered getting a personal life insurance policy outside of work? Do you know how much that would cost? And if the person says, geez, I never thought about that before. I never thought about possibly leaving my job. So in other words, just bringing up the obvious that a work policy is not always going to be there. It's not owned by you, it's owned by the employer and you only have it as a group benefit when you work at that company. The moment you decide to open up your own business or uh, start working for a different company, a startup who doesn't offer this benefit, you can't get a life insurance policy at that time or that life insurance policy doesn't carry over. So just bringing that up for most people is enough to get a personal life insurance policy. However, if they say, look, I really like the company that I'm at right now. I plan on retiring here. I'm gonna work here until I'm 65, maybe 70, or until they kick me out. So if they really are adamant about staying with the company that they're with, then you say, look, um, I'll just mention this as a side note. One of the main reasons why people get a personal life insurance policy, even if they have one through work, is because, and then you bring up one of these three reasons. And sometimes you can bring up multiple of these. You can say either you could bring up taxes and how group life insurance and personal life insurance is taxed differently. You can bring up company layoffs, how during COVID, so many companies laid off employees who were supposedly really secure in their jobs. Or you can bring up a personal example of someone who had to leave their job due to medical reasons and then was uninsurable and couldn't get a life insurance policy on themselves. So. Here's what that would sound. You can, say, you can say, look, John, when you have a personal life insurance policy outside of work, let's suppose you're insured for $500,000. That death benefit, that $500,000 death benefit is paid to your family tax free. So your family gets the full $500,000. Compare that to having a life insurance policy through work that's completely different. If you're insured for $500,000 through your work life insurance policy, and God forbid you pass away, your family doesn't get the full $500,000. So even though you're insured for 500,000, your family gets a lot less than that. They would get somewhere around 300,000, just depending on your tax bracket. So the government will take a big piece of that death benefits. So that's a huge difference between a personal policy versus a work policy. And sometimes when you bring this up, people will say, whoa, I didn't think about that. 
and they'll get a personal policy. Or you could bring up the example of company layoffs. You say, look, during the pandemic, so many companies were forced to lay off their employees, even though they wanted to keep them. Uh, and a lot of people who lost their, their, their job also lost their life insurance policy. Or you can bring up a personal example where you say, look, uh, there's a gentleman that I know who was a dad, uh, married, had three kids, and he was diagnosed with cancer. And this is a true story of uh, someone I know through a friend where he had to quit his job while he was getting chemotherapy. He couldn't get chemotherapy and be at the job that he was working at. So after he left his job, seven months went by and he passed away. And when he passed away, he had no life insurance because the only life insurance policy he had, he had was through work and that was canceled. So because he passed away without having a life insurance policy, he did, couldn't leave any money behind for his family. So his wife had to pick up a second job so that she could keep up with the bills. So I bring this up only because I wanna make sure that your family is never financially burdened if your income was no longer there to support them. And then you simply ask him, look, do you feel like having a personal life insurance policy is worth getting to protect your family financially? And anyone who loves their family, who wants to make sure that their family is taken care of if they're no, no longer there, they'll say, yeah, this makes sense. I'm, I'm not into um, this whole idea of forcing life insurance into people who are not interested. I wanna work with people who are open to that idea. I'll give them a quote, I'll put them into underwriting. Once we get the medical results, then we'll know what um, the real price would be to insure them with a personal life insurance policy. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, all right, this all sounds great. I can see how I can overcome this objection. And by the way, there are so many other things you can say to overcome this objection of I have life insurance to work, but these are just some simple go-tos. If you're watching this video and you're thinking, man, I'd really like to know how I can take those people who are already insured with me, those who have car insurance, homeowners or renters insurance, I'd like to be able to call those clients of mine and offer life insurance, but I just don't know how to do that. Or you're thinking, man, we get 20 calls a day of people who are calling in, they're changing their vehicles, they're adding drivers, they're making payments. These are people who are thrilled to be working with us. And I only, I just wish that my service team would offer life insurance to them. If you'd like to get a script on how to do exactly that, how to cross sell life insurance to your existing clients, then I have a script for that. Not only is it written down, but there's a video training where I explain that full script on how to get into that conversation, how to overcome objections, how to quote them, and how to put them into underwriting. If you'd like to get that script, then that's something that you get at no additional cost. That script you get at no additional cost when you're enrolled in the One Call Close Masterclass. So the One Call Close Masterclass, I'm not going to go into much detail on what's all included, but it's the most powerful sales training for PNC insurance agents. So if you're an insurance agent who sells PNC, so home, auto, uh, renters, and you'd like to write more business, not just PNC, but also life insurance like we discussed, then enroll in the One Call Close Masterclass to get the written scripts and the video training. If you have any questions on anything that we covered today, please visit our website, insurancesaleslab.com, and you can submit your question on that page. Thanks so much for watching this video. Stay tuned for more. Take care.